Hello and welcome to the <laughs> redo, redo. <laughs> uh, okay, no. Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction and Fantasy Marketing Podcast, the show where we have all kinds of technical errors and also errors speaking tonight. Um, we're here to help you establish your author brand, increase the size of your audience, and sell more books. And it's up to you if you think we're actually reliable resources for this stuff. It's not looking good tonight. But um, I'm Lindsay Baroker, and I'm here with uh, Jeffrey Poole and Joe Lalo. And uh, tonight we don't have a guest. We have a guest for you guys next week, so be excited. But uh, we're going to kind of talk about some marketing stuff on our own. We all just kind of threw out some things we th might be interested in talking about and kind of brainstorming with each other. I guess you could call it a little uh, mastermind group for us. So we're going to our ideas and then just kind of talk about it, and hopefully some of what we say is going to be interesting to you. Um, if not, you know, you can sit around and hear me cough and hack and not do a good job speaking for an hour. That's, that's fun times. Um, but going forward here, we're going to first kind of touch on some online marketing stuff. So if you're trying to sell more books, maybe some of this will be interesting for you. And I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to Joe for the first topic. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, the first topic is return on investment. Uh, there's a lot of marketing techniques that require you to do an awful lot to get them to work, and I, I guess uh, uh, the question would have to be both time and money. When do you abandon an experiment, and uh, or at the very least rethink it once it starts eating up more of your resources? And I guess I'll start with my uh, with my thoughts on it, which is I have an experiment I'm running right now, which is a Wattpad chapter one chapter a week story called between which it was sort of it's free and it's just sort of an attempt to get people to get readers in from a different place Wattpad turns out I'm thinking this might be a little bit more time and effort no money it's free for me and for everyone else but I think it's it's not gonna return any of its investment because most people I tell oh I've got this thing on Wattpad they ask me what's Wattpad so that's probably not a huge audience to begin with and uh, it is, I mean, it's essentially one day of writing. I, I'll do a chapter every week, so like every Monday, whatever I write goes toward that. So it's 20% of my time, and I'm getting at this point about 11 readers a week. So I think that's an example of uh, not a strong return on investment. And the other kind of, uh, of marketing I find requires a fair amount of time investment is uh, guest posts. Like, I've, I've done guest posts in the past, and I... I'm sort of on the fence. Sometimes they're very effective. It depends on where you get your guest post put. Other times, you you know, you'll spend you know an hour, two hours writing what you think is a thoughtful guest post, and then you'll give it to the person, and they'll put it up, and nobody reads it. So, I guess in that case, uh, you just have to choose wisely for where to put a guest post because it can take a lot of time and not have a lot of return. I don't know about money. I don't invest a lot of money on my marketing, so. What about you guys? What do you think? I, I would say I'm pretty much the same way. I don't really spend much on marketing at all. Um, things I've been known to tinker with, like which cost me time when I could be writing, is I like you know screwing <laughs> screwing around. I like messing with my blog, changing the appearance, trying to get more you know drive more traffic to it. So <laughs> so I will actually you know I'll, I'll go in there. How about this theme? I'll try it out, and I was like. Huh, you know that the color contrast on there looks terrible. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. I look at the clock. Three hours have gone by. I'm like, dude, I could have written like half to three quarters of a chapter at that point. Hmm. All right. The heck with this. But what about? And I start tinkering again. So it's with me. I, I've, like I can say I don't really do spend too much when it comes to marketing. I would say I. But stuff that wastes my time <laughs> that I haven't really seen any sort of reason to do it because I don't really get people coming to my blog says, hey, cool design. It's more like they come to the blog like, hey, I like your books. And I mean, that's what I want to hear, but. So with me, it's just I'm the type that I get easily distracted. So it's I really need to leave certain things. If it's working, just leave them alone. That's my take on it. I was laughing while Joe was talking because I'm pretty sure he's done a guest post for me. <laughs> yes, I have, and I think that uh, paid off. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, when you wrote this question up, I was going to think I was thinking about books. Like, how do you uh, know if you've started a series that you should just abandon? Then Lindsay, we lose you. Which one? Oh no! Do you not hear me? 
Oh, there you are. I heard you there, but your picture is frozen there. Just keep talking. Oh, well, that happens, bandwidth stuff. As long as you can hear me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, with guest posts and interviews, I think that uh, it pays to look at the site before you agree to do it. And it's hard because you want to be like a, a really cool author and at, uh, respond to everybody's requests for interviews. But I don't know about you guys, but it takes me at least an hour or two to answer. These people will send like 10 or 20 questions, and I'm like, uh, you know, I try to put out good answers. But if it's going on to a blog where there's only three readers, if that, you know, you have to think about, is it worth your time to do that? Are you really going to get anything out of it? You know, but on the flip side, if you get an opportunity to guest post for a really, you know, io9.com or Wired or something, maybe not that high level, but, you know, a blog that people will actually go to and get a lot of comments, you know, then I definitely think it's going to be worth your time. Usually I think you have to seek out those opportunities, though. You're not going to necessarily just uh, have those people come looking for you unless you're just awesome and they actually just found your book and thought you were great. But uh, I, I do think the guest posting is, you know, it can be useful as a pop if it's a popular blog. Interviews, I've really, I love, I do it just because people ask. I, I don't really think there's any return whatsoever on that. Uh, usually those sites that uh, post author interviews don't have any followers because if you think about it, nobody cares until after they've read your book. You know, if you, somebody gives you an interview for some random author, like, you don't care. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just, it is a time, it can be a time sink, so you have to think about, you know, if it's one thing you're just doing it in your free time to kind of be a cool author, I, I totally think there's some valid validity. validity. <laughs> I'm doing great tonight. I think that's a good reason to do it. But if you're answering interviews or doing guest blog posts to sell more books, yeah, like I said, it's probably not going to happen unless it's a, more, a really high uh, traffic blog, which a few of us are going to get invited to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good, good point but, about the interviews. I don't, I don't do much guest blogging, but I've, I've been interviewed a few times, and yes, it's, I don't really expect much to happen from it, from, but from my point of view, you never know who might read those questions like, hmm, I wouldn't mind having him on my blog, or maybe I should spread the word and I know someone else who has runs another blog. I just... You never know who might be paying attention to it. So even though it's, yeah, it probably takes me about an hour per each one there. It's, you know what, why not? You know, it's just helps spread your name out there, so that can't be a bad thing. Yeah, I would say that it's worth looking at the Alexa traffic ranking or maybe the Google page rank for a blog before saying yes. Because like I said, if, if nobody's following it, then nobody's going to see the answers to your questions. Except that one person, and maybe you want to do them a favor. But I was wondering with Joe if you actually uh, do you answer comments and all that stuff on Wattpad. When I've done it, I really just go in there and paste the chapter, and that's all I do. So it, it doesn't take that much time. Um, I don't get a tremendous number of comments. When I do, I answer them. But yeah, uh, I guess mostly my problem isn't the uh, the amount of time is in the writing of the chapter. Uh, when it comes to actually sort of supporting the Wattpad community, there's not a whole lot of support to do, which is sort of why I think it's not uh, paying off for me. Okay, when I've done it, I've just posted stuff I've already written, you know, that I'm trying to, like, my first Emperor's Edge, actually the first three books are up there, and, uh, you know, I have made some sales, I know I've, people have told me they've gone on to read other books in the series. Uh, I do know somebody that else that does original, like, whatever she calls them, Fresh Fridays or something on Wattpad, and, you know, just looking at her book sales, I'd, I wouldn't think that it really makes a difference. Um, you know, there's the argument with Wattpad that they're younger readers and maybe later on they'll have money to spend when they're out of college or whatever so maybe you can get them early but uh, are you thinking that you want to like take that and put it into a book eventually I mean is it stuff that would get published eventually anyway I originally called it the bad idea exercise because it was just all of the ideas that I had abandoned from other books because they didn't fit the theme but at this point I think the characters are strong enough if not the plot. The plot is again what you come up with week by week without planning anything so it's not really solid. But uh, there's like over 100,000 words and I really like the characters and the setting so probably once this thing comes to some narrative end I'm going to chop it up into a, into a standalone novel. Yeah, it seems like anything that you write that you actually like it, you know, it could come back later, you can repurpose it and sell it and then that becomes not so much wasted time, you know, just there's a place to put your rough drafts. That's true. 
Well, since I've misunderstood your original question, let me ask you guys, do you have any series that you've started or, um, you know, books or short stories or anything where you feel like you need to go on because you've got some people reading them, but maybe they don't make as much money as your other series and not as many people are into them, so you kind of ask yourself, well, do I, should I really finish this? Should I actually put the time into doing that? Or should I work on something that's proven itself to actually sell a little better? Um, in my case, I've, uh, I have two main series. Well, I've, at this point, I have one main series and a, seri uh, a group of other secondary things, and none of them are making the money that the, the main series is. And in almost every situation, even between, even the experiment on Wattpad, I feel beholden to the people who have gotten invested in the story that I need to bring it to some point of closure. And as a result, I sort of tend to keep pouring stuff into it. The only series I completely pulled the plug on, at least for now, is the, the other eight, that thing I released on uh, April Fool's Day last year that was sort of put a bad taste on my mouth with its performance. So that technically could have been a serious starter, and I've had people who told me they want to read more of it, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere until I until I uh, start tying up some other loose ends. Yeah, me personally, I haven't actually you know started any other series that I haven't actually finished just yet, <coughs> Flash Gold. But uh, what I was actually thinking of is I always like reading a story that you know that yeah, they will they will bring it to some sort of conclusion or at least give some indication that it'll keep going. So that way you don't feel gypped when you start reading the story. You know, so <coughs> Flash Gold. Excuse me, sorry, Dusty in here. Have you even read those? Or are you just harassing me because I mentioned that once? <laughs> oh, no, I, I like those stories. I keep waiting for a, a full-length novel or a, a continuation there, but uh, no, somebody's not doing it yet. So <laughs> that would be me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, see, there's an example, though, of something that really doesn't make me any money, so it has to be like in between other projects that actually can pay the bills. And, you know, at this point I am committed to finishing everything. It's just things get bumped aside for other things. But I I do think that, you know, right now I'm not sure I want to start a book one that ends on a cliffhanger and unless I'm really excited about it and really committed to finishing at least a ser you know, a trilogy or something no matter what. Because so I do think uh, one of the things with indie publishing is that you do get results really quickly and find out, you know, how are the reviews? Are people actually buying it? And I would say that whether people are buying it or not, means more than the reviews just because the reviews can be good and the book cannot sell at all or not sell you know as well as your other stuff so it is interesting to uh, get results so quickly you know if you're doing traditional publishing and you have signed up for a three book deal I think you're pretty committed you gotta write those no matter what but now I'm starting to think doing pilots that can stand alone so if I don't decide to go on then it's okay but uh, to have a plan to make it into a series because actually the, the one pilot I wrote that I, or the thing I meant to be a standalone was my Balanced on the Blade's Edge uh, last spring. And it sold well enough that I was like, dang, maybe I should make a series out of this. But I hadn't really been planning that way from the beginning, so it's kind of, uh, it's coming together okay now, but it's not as tidy of a series as it could be. So I don't know. You guys will have to let me know <laughs> if there's anything you're thinking of abandoning or have you changed your strategies at all as far as uh, launching new stuff? I, uh, no, go ahead. Uh, I I definitely made the switch from cliffhangers to uh, to sequel hooks because uh, I know that if I was reading a book that was re that I was really into and it had a cliffhanger at the end and I find out well it wasn't a big seller so the author abandoned it I know that I would be very upset so I try as the author not to do that so yeah I will write a thing that could continue and I'll put a little hint at what might be the thread that would continue to the next one but I try to make the first book in a potential series be at least uh, satisfying by itself. Because again, I don't know what I'm going to have to abandon, because even working full-time as an author, there's there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah, I, I just flat out haven't ever started a series, because I've only got two series going for me at the moment, but I've never started one and felt like, eh, this one stinks, it's a bad seller or whatnot, and I'll just move on to something else, because like I said, I, I've, I've written one with a cliffhanger, and that's the one that's going to be released here in the next week or so, knock on wood, so uh, <laughs> that one's got a cliffhanger, so I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm also better than halfway into the next one to follow up to it, so we'll see what happens. All right, give it time. 
<laughs> You'll decide, <laughs> let me jump to another genre or something, and, and then that's kind of when these things happen, I think, is when you start, you just have ideas and want to explore them, and I don't know. It's, it's different, too, I think, when you're actually, when you start to depend on this income, you really have to think about, you know, am I going to get a return that makes sense for the amount of hours I'm investing in this, and however much I'm spending on cover art, and you know, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense when you're doing it part-time too, but you know, you got to pay the bills, so <laughs> it becomes a little more. I have to make smart choices financially, not just as far as like what I want to work on and what I'm passionate about. Makes but sense. anyway, okay, enough blathering about that. <laughs> so <laughs> next topic, um, I just thought it'd be interesting. Like, what's one marketing thing you guys have done that you didn't expect much from, but that actually turned out surprisingly well? Uh, for me, um, I've when I first wrote my my first and second book there, I didn't really think about or worrying about that little author note thing at the back, and or as well as maybe putting like a preview chapter for like the next or else like a teaser or something for the next one. So I was like, eh. When people say I, I've I looked at some of the books that were in the series that I really follow, and I was kind of looking at, I was like, okay, they kind of do that, or they put an author note back there saying, hey, would you mind leaving me reviews, or would you mind spreading the word, or oh, hey, look, I recommend if you like this book, you know, try that book. And I was like, yeah, why not? And give it a try. I used a, a bunch of my other indie author friends there, and they actually wrote back to me saying, I don't know why you did that, but thank you. I'll return the favor because it's been a boost in sales. So stuff like that, I just didn't really to think much of. I just kind of what the heck couldn't hurt and put it at the end there and. Worked well. Um, as for me, there's sort of two, both of which um, everyone agreed is a really good good idea to do it, and I just sort of had my doubts that I could make it work. One of them was the mailing list. Everybody says that you have to have a mailing list, and I just, even when I knew that it was going to be useful to have one, I sort of felt I was late to the party and I had missed my chance to start building one. My mailing list is, is still less than 400 right now, but even with, with that relatively small number compared to some of the just mammoth mailing lists that some people have, each, you can tell, you can see in the impact, you know, follow, like, like I have free orders out, and I can see every time I send an email and the pre-orders are open, there's a punch of pre-orders on that day. So there's undeniable uh, response to mailing lists that I sort of thought I wouldn't get. And the other one is bundles. I've been in... A couple of bundles, not story bundle, but like multi-author bundles. I was in one that, I don't know if we discussed in detail, we probably will in a future show, that uh, uh, it's performing very well and it sort of got my, it's, it got my name far enough up on the wrong genre uh, list for authors that I've gotten the, the uh, I've been asked if I want to judge a horror writing competition. So I'm high enough up on the horror list because there is some dark fantasy in the, in the, uh, the, the bundle that people were asking me to do stuff for that. So it's been spectacularly effective at getting my name further up on lists. And I really didn't have high hopes for it because, again, I sort of have low hopes for virtually anything that I contribute to because I am naturally pessimistic. So those are my two mailing lists and multi-author bundles. Both work really well, far uh, exceeding my expectations. All right. I think I could actually put multi-author bundles in both of these questions, uh, what did better than you thought it would and what did worse than you thought it would for, for different bundles, for different reasons. But um, I actually, the thing I talked about last week is an example of something that I didn't expect it to really do that much and that's where I took the first three books in my Dragon Blood series, uh, did a new cover and threw together a bundle and had it for 99 cents, which I've done before. But as, as I mentioned last week, this time I did a new cover and I did a new blurb and I tried to kind of appeal to epic fantasy, swords and sorcery, more than the steampunk, because it, I, I, like I've talked about before, I never write solidly in any one genre, so you could kind of go either way. But uh, this time, I actually got a book bub ad that really did well, and you know, it'll sold over 10,000 units, and it's actually sold really well in Barnes and & Noble, and, uh, which has affected sales of the fourth book in the series, and so I'm, I'm making more Barnes & Noble than I ever have. And, I know it will die off and I'm going to be very sad when that happens, but <laughs> that's definitely been something that uh, I didn't expect much, you know, I, BookBub always pays for itself, I don't not expect anything, but uh, my experience in the past has been that it pays for itself and then the sales pretty much peter out after a couple days and you're kind of back to your baseline within a week or so. So that was one thing and, you know, whether or not you get BookBub or not, I think it's worth bundling the books in your own series 
to uh, play around with different blurbs and different covers and just see if you can appeal to a different audience. Even though it's the same story, you never know. I'm kind of figuring out that the blurb is, <laughs> it's all about the blurb. That, uh, you know, you can write the most original story you want, but when it comes time to write the blurb, you probably want to make it sound like everything else that people like. Just throw in a couple, you know, unique details, but uh, whatever's selling well, find the way to kind of write for that, you know, in that same vein, I would say. That's, uh, so that's my discovery of the last month. <laughs> But if uh, you guys don't have any more on that, I'll ask my follow-up question. What's the one marketing thing that everybody does and says you should do, but that has been a waste of time for you? Uh, for me, that definitely ties into the, my question right below it, but probably trying to utilize every last freaking type of social media that there is. I mean, for instance, I started up an Instagram account because uh, I was like, okay, that seems to be the rage at the moment. I was like, okay, I can do that. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> it's, you're just you know pinning other stuff to certain boards. I mean, or Instagram, and then there's like Pinterest as well. I mentioned I Pinterest, and and I did it with both and Pinterest and Instagram. It's like okay, well that's cool that I have them, but I'm not really exactly certain how I can make this work in my benefit sort of thing. So until I figure that part out, I'm not necessarily certain that every last little bit of social media is going to work for you, at least as an author, anyways. I hope to be proven wrong. Uh, for me, I've, this one's sort of like, I fall on both sides of this one. Audience interaction, I interact with my audience as much as I possibly can, and a lot of people like swear by things like running give, like running giveaways, not just giving your books away to people who ask for them or giving your books away as incentives for things, but like an actual competition or contest with your audience. I've heard a lot of people say that it's a great way to drum up, like even people who aren't interested in your books and just want a free thing, it's a it's a good way to get a lot of eyes on your on your your books. I don't think I've ever had a competition or a giveaway that had a particularly strong impact. Like I'm hesitant to give away anything really choice because of how little turnout I tend to get on the smaller ones. I guess it's sort of a, a like catch twenty two. They you won't get as many people biting on a giveaway if it's not a really good thing you're giving away, but at the same time. If you're not seeing a lot of turnout on any of your stuff, you're afraid to give away something big. So I, I have not found a tremendous amount of success on giveaways, even though they've been well recommended. In fact, there are times I've done like a raffle copter giveaway where there weren't enough entries for me to actually give the thing away. So I feel a little weird on those. With that, with that raffle copter, is there like a reserve not met type of thing from eBay where you, know, you can say, okay, well, if I don't have at least... X amount of participants, then I don't. Am I obligated to actually give the thing away? Is that how that works? That was my observation, at least with it. I wasn't. I wasn't the run. I wasn't the one running it. I guess that's another one too. Blog tours, uh, it, as part of a, a promotion package with uh, with somebody I'd worked with in the past. There was a giveaway, and she was running the giveaway, and I was never asked to actually give her a book to give away. So I have to assume that the giveaway did not have enough entries. I know there was at least a few because someone I know entered, but it was whatever. There's like a there's a count and how many books giveaways are, are earned or something like that, and it never ticked up to one book. So I guess you can set reserves. Hmm. Good to know. I think blog tours is probably up there for me too. I did a couple when I first got started, and I thought it was useful for getting some reviews. Even though that wasn't promised as part of the deal, I found that a lot of the people that hosted the tour, you know, you'd send them a copy of the book, and some of them would actually read it and they'd post the review on their blog and also on Amazon. So if you don't have any reviews and that's what you want to get out of it, I think a blog tour might be useful. Uh, but it kind of goes back to the guest posting and uh, interviews thing. If the blogs that you're going to be hosted on are not, don't really have much traffic or many viewers, then you can end up spending a lot of time doing guest posts, answering interview questions, and not really get much out of it. Uh, I haven't done much with giveaways either. I think I, I've done fun ones where I'm not really trying to get anything out of it, basically just giving away paperback, signed paperbacks to readers I know are already fans because, you know, I, I talked about this before where I had people design a hat for one of my characters that always wears the crazy hats, and, you know, they seemed to really have a good time with that, and I got like 100 entries. Some people actually drew the hats, which... <laughs> made me 
sad that I can't draw. I was really impressed. I was like, wow, that, I want to give that person something just because they drew a cool hat. But uh, as far as just getting random people because they want to win something, yeah, I, I know we've talked about it before. I don't think that really translates into readers for the most part. I don't know. I was going to answer Facebook events as my thing where <laughs> even though I know we had Brian Cohen on and he had some really good luck with Facebook events, it seems to be one of those things that everybody does and I just when I participated in them, I'm like, I don't think this is selling any books, guys. I'm, I'm not sure there's like, I don't know, I guess if you could do a big group author one and have fun with it, it'd be all right, but it's one of those things that I get invited to them all the time, and I'm just like, why Why would you think I would want to do this? I, I don't read your books. I, we've only talked because I don't know why. <laughs> you liked my page or something or vice versa, but I don't know. I haven't seen that people really get that much out of them and it's, it takes a lot of effort to plan those it's not like you know it's not like just tweeting or something that's pretty easy yeah I, I've I've done a couple of those Facebook events for like you know the people that organize them where you know, each author takes like a half an hour or an hour they can talk about the book and the only thing that it accomplished was I added a whole lot of friends but what I've noticed is all these friends are just looking for other friends they can invite to their Facebook events so I was getting invitations up the wazoo I'm like I started unfollowing all these people It's like you know what I stop inviting me to these things I don't know you I don't I'm not a horror movie person or a horror book fan I, okay this one falls squarely in erotica that's that's not what I want to be associated with so but yeah they, they haven't really worked for me either so I should have included that one as well I should have told you we have an erotica author on next week. Do I'm we? just kidding. <laughs> I was like, huh. Maybe someday. I, I, could probably, I could probably grab that file and you know, chop it up, edit that part out. But <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. May I will if we can get somewhere. There's some science fiction erotica people out there selling tons of books. But You're just, you're um, just mad about that Flash Gold reference, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad right. I know you, actually, you read them. I was just wondering if you were hassling me and hadn't read them. No, just, you know, I, I just read a them. I'm eagerly awaiting the next one. Hint, hint. <laughs> all right, all right. Good to know. I'm tell people is, you know, I think it's okay to try anything once, but don't assume just because there's some list out there that says these are the 99 when you're marketing, that everything on there is going to be a gem. You know, sometimes some things work in one genre and don't really work in another genre, or maybe not work for other books and don't work for yours. So I think you can try everything once, but you know, like try to tell, you know, use affiliate links or track your links with a Bitly or something like that, just so you know if you're actually getting clicks and you're actually making sales from your efforts. Don't just assume that, you know, every you got to do all this stuff. I'll see people because I'll see people doing all these things, and then I look at their sales ranking and it's like 500,000 on Amazon. So that means they're selling like two books a month which is fine, but you need to sit back and think, well, should I be doing all this stuff or should I try to figure something else out that might be worth my time? So that's my last thought on that. <laughs> uh, next question I'm going to hand over to Jeff. All right. Okay. Before I answer my question, I have one for you and Joe. Do you, you both have a Twitter account? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> It is many people's opinions that you should utilize all aspects of social media, as I mentioned before. With that being said, how would an author conceivably use Twitter to help further their writing career? Are you looking for people to tweet about your book, or would you be expected as the author to tweet about upcoming books? Maybe they're interested in more normal, mundane activities that you guys do. So I've had many, many people pressure me to create a Twitter account. And I cannot for the life of me see that how that would help me out. So I'm curious to hear from a couple people that actually have Twitter accounts. Take it away. Uh, well, in my case, I, I've found that there's a lot of different things that social different social networks are good for and Twitter is very much a, oh, I just had this thought, let me send it out to the world. So for people who follow my Twitter account, which I, I, have, I have a lot more Facebook followers than, than anyone else, but uh, it's just good, like, if that's my sort of personal thoughts channel. Like, I will, if I have a book coming out, I'll say, oh, here's a book coming out. Or if I get a piece of art, really anything small that I just sort of want to, like, uh, a one-sentence thought or just an image, that's what I use Twitter for. And it's, it's handy because, like a lot of other social networks, you can just, on your phone, hit one button that sends it, like, somebody can say, oh, I like that, retweet. And then, boop, it goes out to other people. So I find that Twitter is good for just little 
quick little thoughts. I have some people who I have conversations with on Twitter, like it's a chat, because you'll see my thing and we'll just bounce back and forth. Usually that's when it's like one in the morning and everyone else is asleep. But uh, it's very good for quick back and forth with people, and it's very good for little short little personal thoughts. Not so much for, for just tirading people with, uh, I've got a book coming out in three months, I've got a book coming out in two months. You know? out, of, uh, out of curiosity, can you give me an example of one of your quick little thoughts that you would like tweet out to your followers? It's like, hey, it's snowing. I hate snow. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. i got my Twitter thing right here. Let's see the last couple things I said. I'm sure this will be fascinating for everyone. Um, <laughs> I well, let's see. I retweeted something from my sculptor because she was open. I had tweeted a picture of this thing, which we can talk about later. Um, I may or may not have purchased the song "Walk the Dinosaur" for writing research. These are the things that I say. Walk the dinosaur. Oh God, was that was not was? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was funny. I did not know the name of the band. I only knew the name of the songs. It was kind of hard to find at first. Oh, I just made myself look terribly bad. Okay, that's great. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that song six times in a row for something that I was writing, which, by the way, is between the thing that I'm s thinking of stopping. So now you know why, because it leads me to unusual behaviors like that. But I tweet about it, so that's useful. Also, by the way, a thing about Twitter that I should bring up, the hashtags you throw on Twitter can really open you up to people who have no idea who you are. If you stick am writing on there, almost invariably, if I have something even halfway interesting to say, and I put am writing because it's me while I'm writing, I'll get random authors sort of favoriting or retweeting. Like you really do get to get a little bit more of an audience when you when you choose hashtags correctly. Hmm. Interesting. All right. For myself, I made a little list of what I actually do on there while <laughs> Joe was talking because you know I wouldn't want to actually listen to him or something. But no, I w I was listening. I totally was. There's not going to be a test later. But I hope. But um. So I use Twitter, and it's one of those ones where I used it before. It's actually the only social media thing I was on before I actually published books. The other stuff I felt obligated to get into now that I was doing this author thing. But I, I like Twitter because it's, sh it's short because you can only post short stuff so it's not a big time commitment. It's really easy to just post an update, blah, 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 one sentence or whatever. And uh, some of the things I will do is I'll share quotes from works in progress. So it's a way to kind of update existing readers and let them know that I'm working on the next book and so they don't forget about me. Uh, you know, and I'll put the link to my Twitter feed in the back of the book so that they can find me easily. Um, one thing that's kind of cool that's happened with Twitter is that, especially when I was actively publishing my Emperor's Edge series, I had at least 10 or 12 people doing role-playing. They made uh, Twitter accounts with my characters and they'd go back and forth and include me in their tweets and I found it hilarious and also like a nice ego boost like oh it's cool my characters are talking to me on Twitter it's either cool or it's really weird I'm not sure but I liked it so um, and right now you can pin a post on Twitter so if you actually have something that you said that you want everybody to see you can make it at the, pro at the top of your profile page so, for instance, right now I have that epic bundle that uh, Joe and I are in. You know, it's like, yeah, 99 cents, get 12 or 14 books of epic fantasy, and here's the link. And uh, because I do use the affiliate links, and I will actually make different affiliate IDs in my Amazon account so I can kind of track and see where sales came from. I know that not a lot come from Twitter, but I know that I do actually sell some books from through Twitter. And I think most of it is just kind of trying to be maybe an interesting person or sharing interesting snippets from your work or just whatever might be kind of entertaining, showing some of your personality. And then people are, maybe because somebody retweets it, somebody that wouldn't have otherwise have found you, finds you, and then they can read your little bio. And my bio says, the answer is, uh, full-time indie fantasy slash steampunk author who loves travel, yoga, tennis, and vishlas. There's your dogs, guys. Uh, download my first novel for free at Barnes & Noble's, iTunes, and Amazon. And I actually have the link to Amazon. Uh, I would love to have the link to all of them, but, you know, you're really... It's 180 characters or something. And then I also have my location and my link to my website in my profile. So it's not scintillating. I'm sure other people have cooler ones, but it very succinctly tells you my, sh my deal, you know. 
So uh, I have sold books that way, uh, especially if you're doing a special, a 99 cent, 99 cent thing, or if you have free, a free book. You know, I think people are way more open to being promoted too if you're just sharing something that's free with them. Asking people to take out their credit card, probably, you know, that's not really what Twitter's for, uh, unless they've already identified themselves as your readers and they're actively waiting for the next book. So, uh, you know, a place to interact with fans, possibly get new readers or p new people that are interested in your stuff, kind of network with other authors possibly. And for those people out there that are thinking, I'm hoping that one day I could get an agent or a traditional publishing deal, that is something they will look at is how many Facebook likes you have, how many Twitter followers you have, uh, whether or not it's uh, really that genuine or representative of how popular you are, sometimes it doesn't matter that much because it's appearances, you know, it's like, oh, hey, he's got 50,000 Twitter followers. and uh, But you're not going to fool anyone if you're following 50,000 people and you have 50,000 followers. So <laughs> <laughs> that, everybody knows that deal where, oh, you follow me, I'll follow you. But, uh, you know, if they see that you actually have a community, it's a place where other people, you might not know it, but other people are judging you right <laughs> now. So, and I know that's not a goal for every indie author, but a lot of people do still hope that someday their sales will be good enough that maybe they can get that traditional deal. So, rambling answered your question. <laughs> Actually, I think that answered mine, so you're up for the next question. All right, I think this is the last in our section here on online marketing. What are your thoughts on buying sponsored ads for your books? Uh, personally, I, I I haven't actually paid for any sponsored ads, but I'm I'm up for the I'm up for it if I knew for certain that it worked. And so far, I've heard mixed reviews where Facebook ads work. Facebook, I mean, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, I, I I do. I really am interested in any of those BookBub ads there because I know they're a little on the pricier side. But everyone says the same thing, especially you two there. Is like they will pay for themselves because it's a good way to get your book out there. But I, I unfortunately I haven't actually used one yet, so I'm not exactly the the, the right person to ask on that. Uh, broadly speaking, I, my advertising dollar doesn't. I have done some sponsor type stuff. Most recently, I was on uh, Story Finds. Uh, I did. I was like a, a whatever, one of the books of the week or something like that. Uh, I have not found that that sponsored ads are really hugely huge turnout. At least the places that I've gotten them. I do. I do uh, promote Facebook posts every now and then, but generally speaking, I haven't found a lot of sort of side of page, top of page ads that have paid off. So I'm sort of lukewarm on sponsored ads. All right, for myself, I actually I just wish there were more things where it actually was worth it, like BookBub is one, uh, e-reader news today, usually if you can get in their bargain books, they'll do a roundup of 99 cent books or something for, it doesn't cost that much, but you know, I always make my money back on that. Um, some of the other sites that you just kind of hope, like Pixel of Ink, they, I don't think they take submissions anymore or they take them once a year or something. You know, you'll hope that uh, you'll be picked up when you put a book for 99 cents or for free. Sometimes they just, you know, they have bots out there monitoring when books go on sale and, you know, that can be great results when you do that. Um, but I do, it's the one thing where it takes no time. Aside from filling out a form, almost everything else takes time and then you get into the situation of, well, is my time better off? Am I should I just be writing the next book, or should I be writing a guest post, or trying to figure out what's the magic thing I can do? So I do play around. I usually end up buying some ads every month. Um, I just I'm always watching. I'm like, what's the next big thing going to be that compete with BookBub? I, I keep hoping, you know, because I would love to just have, be able to cycle, you know, this this month, this next month, and and a, able to keep the sales going. Because you know, it's it's I won't say it's easy to have a good launch and do well, but the real hard part is keeping your book sales going month in, month out, year in, year out. And, and that's where if you can have some sites like that where you can do the sponsorships, it can really help with that. So, And, and what I'll do now, too, sometimes is uh, I'll try to stack the advertisements. So even if it's a site like, let's say, Kindle Nation Daily, for me, never pays off. Um, I've heard in some other genres it does okay. But for me, I never earn my money back on that one. But if it sells enough, 
that maybe it gets you up into the top 100 of your category on Amazon for a day, and then the next day you have an ad with somebody else, and the next day you have one with someone else, and it, then maybe you culminate with a good one, maybe you got e-reader news today or something like that. It, it can be enough to kind of keep the momentum going to help you on Amazon. They seem to like the uh, uh, sustained sales as opposed to the sudden 24-hour spike and then down. So uh, it's something I'm always exploring and will definitely keep watching and you know, if you guys hear of any good uh, good new sites out there to check out, uh, I'm very loath to spend money on a new site like that because it's it's almost never worth it. Uh, so, but I that's one place we're watching. Keyboards, the Writers Cafe is is good. You can go on there and say, hey, have you ever heard of this site? And ten people in an hour will say no, or yeah, they sucked, or oh yeah, I actually got my money back. So, something something to watch out for. Cool. All right, so I guess we're going to move on to kind of um, if you guys have had any good results with uh, marketing in person and actually meeting people and doing cons and stuff. So I'm going to pass the first question off to Jeff. All right, so assuming you're an author and you're living in a, a smaller town or depending on whatever town you're living in, what is something you guys do local to your hometown to try and sell more books? Do you guys do book signings? I mean, I've heard of some authors doing book readings at the local library, and I'll answer this question myself. The only thing I've done thus far is, especially here in town, I've, I've tried the whole bit where I, I actually sent out a tentative, like a promo thing when I released my first book here for the newspaper, and I'm all, I'm actually really, really glad it didn't run it because my book, first book, needs a little work still. But I have donated copies of all my books to the local library, and I can actually, since everything's online anymore, I can check to see when they're checked out, and actually they've been checked out quite a bit, so... Thus far, that's all I've done. I haven't had the guts to do a book signing yet, at least not here in town, because I will not be that old fuddy-duddy behind the table waiting for people to come walking up to me. I just I saw one in there at the bookstore last week, and I was just, looked at my wife and went, look, that's why I don't do book signings. She laughed, and we moved on. <laughs> so that's for me, anyways. Uh, for me, I also haven't done a tremendous amount locally. Uh, I do find that, particularly from, from a, a, a smallish town, there's a pretty good chance you are going to be one of the few people who's making a really solid go at, at being an author. And I've learned from experience that when you say you're an author, people implicitly assume that you're some sort of celebrity. Like, oh, you're an author, therefore famous. So I've found that there's a lot of like local, like your local newspaper or something like that. If you sort of, especially if you've had any level of success, uh, you can sort of knock, you know, you can sort of show, oh, look, look, you search for my name. I'm up there on Amazon right now. You'll find that there are some local folks who'll probably want to talk to you. I, I've I haven't gone so far as to reach out to my old hometown newspaper, but uh, that's the sort of thing that you can I almost guarantee that you can do. Whether or not it's going to have a tremendous impact, who knows? But it will be really cool to have a piece of paper that was printed and handed out to people. You can hold up and say, "Hey, look what I was in the paper." Though I was in a newspaper once, but it wasn't for my hometown. It was some valedictorian of a, of a small town in the Midwest was asked what his favorite book was, and it was The Book of Deacons. So I was like, yay! I remember I took a picture. Somebody had, somebody had sent me a link to it, and I took a picture of the thing. So yeah, uh, your local news outlets will probably be very interested in hearing that you're, you're trying out this author thing, particularly if you've had any success. Uh, the library thing is another good idea. My local library, I dropped a couple of my books in, and I haven't checked to see if they've been borrowed or anything. But anything that lets people, especially if you've taken the advice of putting information in the back on how to get in contact with you and how to find your other books, anything to put your books in front of somebody, even if it was free, is probably a good idea. And I, again, I haven't done any local uh, appearances, so I don't know how well the, like signing the stuff would work, but I'm not above giving it a try. All right, this is one of those questions where I can just answer, no, I have not done these things. <laughs> And it's not because I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a great idea. I'm just such an introvert that I just the idea of going up to the library and being like, hey, do you want to have some of my books for your library, maybe? And then I could see him saying, are you self-published? Yes. We're not interested, thanks. But so and but I, I do keep meaning to go down to my local library here in Prescott, Arizona, now that I live here, because I actually was surfing around and found a it's a science fiction romance online magazine review site, 
and one of the reviewers was like the head librarian or, or some librarian, you know, in our lo and she lived here in our local library. So I was like, okay, I can go find that person and have a conversation with them. It's not as weird, but I haven't done that yet, and uh, it's kind of confusing because that's my pen name that writes that stuff. So I'd have to say, well, if you haven't heard of me, maybe you've heard of my pen name. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I know I've not done anything, but I have heard of people who have and are really proactive with this stuff. So it's it's not a bad idea. I mean, I had I went to visit a, a fellow writer in, um, gosh, is it Lockhart, Lubbock? It's a suburb of Texas near Austin. I want to say Lockhart. And uh, she's just, her stuff was all over that town. She had a, her books in, like, the basket store. And I, I don't know. I hope I'm not mangling. This is Gretchen Ricks if you want to check her out, guys. But she was awesome. She took me on a tour of the town and, get, you know, took me to have some chili, Texas chili. But she was awesome. She was just pimping her book out there, you know. And I think that's awesome that she was, and I, you can tell by how many times I'm saying the word awesome that, that I think it's awesome. But I love people who do that. I think it's so great. That's so entrepreneurial and, and totally do that, especially if you're in a small town. You can, you know, really make some friends and make some connections. Uh, so don't be an yeah, you, introvert like me. <laughs> you, you definitely definitely need to go to the library because I consider myself a, an introvert as well as I'm kind of leaning a little towards extrovert, but mostly introvert. But I got to tell you, when I walked up to that library counter and I looked at the ladies, <laughs> ladies behind the counter, the stereotypical attitude or vision of all librarians so they're like probably in their mid 60s early 70s you know it's like little look like little church going ladies not that there's anything wrong with them but I walked up to there and I said I had three of my books with me and I said do you, do you accept submissions and they looked at me like and I, apparently no one's ever asked them that question before. They just looked at me like, well yes we do. Are you donating some books? It's like yeah do you have a local author section? And they just looked at me like well, yes. Are you an author? And I gave them, I pushed the books towards them. Like, yeah. In case you'd like to have a copies of them, they're like, oh well, thank you. And I turned around and hauled at, hauled <laughs> tail out of there before they had a chance to actually comment. And I I glanced back at them as I was walking out the door. It's like dropping a slab of beef inside a piranha infested river. All their little staff and the interns, everything just, oh, look at this. And they're flipping through the books. And I'm sure I turned red as a Coke can. I'm like, oh, I'm not even going to answer questions. And there's no way. I'm out of here. I, I, this was my baby step forward today. So, but yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's good for you. It's, just, you know, it's definitely taking a step outside the comfort zone. Let me tell you that. But it was fun. That's actually really good. If Maybe it's even an advantage if you live in a smaller town. Because I've heard that I actually interviewed a librarian, librarian on my site once, and she mentioned that if books don't get checked out so often, they get, you know, taken off the shelves and sold or <laughs> recycled or whatnot. Not, but I would think in a smaller town that they would actually be more likely to not get so many people trying to give them their books and would be happy to feature a, a local author. Yes, because usually they'll they'll have like a little literally a sticker that says local author, and they'll put that on the book. So I think that might be their indicator that if it doesn't get checked out, don't get rid of it because the author lives here in town. So you never know. That's that's what they did for mine, especially here in Havasu. Or you can bribe people you know to go in and check them out every now and then to, <laughs> to make sure they're uh, <laughs> they're secretly, getting read. I secretly check out my own books just to make sure they don't end up in the dollar bin <laughs> or something. But you never know. All right, I think Joe has the next question. Yes, I do. This sort of ties into the previous one, which is uh, what, if any, value is there to personal appearances like conventions, sightings, etc.? So, again, I haven't done any signings, but I have gone to conventions not uh, with a booth or anything. Although people, when, I, when you say on your page, I'm going to be at a convention, they assume, oh, well, where are you going to be and what are your hours? Like, you're, you're going to be sitting there at a little chair. But uh, I have done a convention. <laughs> yeah, I do. A nomadic I author. <laughs> I will send. I'll send a uh, a tweet out. I'll be like, all right, um, I'm here now. Anyone want to meet me? I'll go stand by this statue. You know, <laughs> like that. Like literally, I've met. Uh, at this so point, that's like, yeah, what Twitter people. is for. Okay, you can use Twitter for that. Okay. Exactly. Yes, that that exact thing happened. I was I got in a little bit early because when you're an author, they let you in on the same hours as press. So usually it's an hour earlier one day. So I was on the floor already, and I sent out a tweet. Well, I just got here. I took a picture of Smaug. There was a giant statue of Smaug at the front of the door. And I was like, oh, I'm inside. I got Smaug right by the door. He's going to wake up. And then, like, two seconds later, I got a re you know, reply. It was like, oh, you're here. I'm on the line waiting to get in. And I, we arranged where we were going to meet, and I talked to a fan. So uh, I think it's very useful to, be, to, to get out to a place where there's going to be a lot of people. 
I don't know if it translates directly into sales, but it certainly translates directly into being able to talk to people and get excited, uh, you know, get them excited and get excited because you're talking to them. I can't describe to you how off, uh, happy, how happy it makes me to meet a fan face to face who I've spoken with online because it makes them a real person as opposed to just text on a page. So I say thumbs up to personal. Uh, uh, appearances, especially if you can be relatively certain you're going to meet somebody you know. <laughs> and you better believe that person's going to go, man, I just met one of my favorite authors, and, or else I met an author here, and he writes this, and he's a really nice guy, and they're going to, and that's whoever they're talking to is like, oh yeah, what's the name of his book? Let me go look it up, and I'll give it a try, and it just spreads from there. Yep. Yeah, I've definitely uh, could see, I've definitely met with readers before, uh, not at a convention, but just a uh, you know, on road trips, actually, I was in Las Vegas and a couple other places where I just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to be here for a couple days. Is anybody in the neighborhood? And I've gotten tour guides of, you know, let's go here and here's where we eat. And, we'll, you know, people always want to, like, buy you dinner and stuff. And I feel bad because like, I, I wasn't looking for free food. But uh, I do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. You may buy me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you already bought my books. So you don't have to buy me dinner. It's cool. But um, so I've had really good experiences meeting up with readers for sure, and I've actually you know become friends and even you know gone on vacations with people that originally I met because we met online because they had read my books, and uh, you know now they're like beta readers and good friends. So that's really cool. Um, I would say with the really small conventions, it's I've been to two of those, and you know odds are you're not going to have a reader there <laughs> in a small little convention. At least I didn't. Uh, and I mostly felt awkward, so I think if I do conventions in the future, it will be like I know people going in, so I can at least hang out with some other authors, if nothing else. But uh, I would definitely could see where do something like Dragon Con. I mean, I know I have people that go to those big ones, where that could be a good chance to meet up with people for sure. Yeah, my my convention was NYCC, the New York Comic Con. I met some people there, and also uh, uh, Penny Arcade Expo East, which I'm going to be at again. If there's anybody going to Boston for Penny Arcade Expo, I'll be there. But uh, yeah, so I got I'm I'm fortunate enough to be sort of New York City adjacent, so I can go to the big ones. Uh, the next one, the next question is also mine, and it's about swag and other merchandise that you don't sell. So I've been investigating this lately. When you go to conventions, particularly if you have a booth, everybody who's there has got something to, for you to take with you. I mean, you, the business card is traditional. The business cards aren't really that cool, so people start making swag, and it can usually just be as simple as a, just a, a, a bookmark, which is just a long business card. Uh, but there's lots of other cool, cool stuff you want to do, too. And I've been looking into some of this stuff, and again, I have a 3D printer, so I made, like, a thing. This is going to really be great for people who are listening. But if you're watching, you can see me holding up a weird off-white piece of plastic with an unusual shape on it. It's super impressive, guys. Super Trust impressive. Me. It's it's majestic, I tell you. But so like that was a thing I, I I might try to do something with. I don't think I can really make it cost-effective. But there's a piece of swag I want to do. Bookmarks is a good idea. I'm probably going to make those and then like hand them out at conventions or just whenever anybody buys a thing from me that is actual merchandise, like a paperback. I'll throw it in there too, just as an extra bonus. But somebody, I had asked people what they would want, and somebody suggested this, and I think it's a good idea. Uh, book plates. That's to say, the little sticker that you stick in the front of a book to let them know, somebody know that it's your book. People were like, why don't you autograph book plates? And it's a really good idea for two reasons. Number one, maybe someone wants your autograph, but they can't afford your paperback, or they already bought your paperback, and they don't want two copies on their shelf. Now they can just get an autograph book plate and slap it into the front of their book, and now they have an autograph book. And what's more, it only costs like 50 cents to have one of the, well, you know, if you get like 500 of them, it only costs like a buck or 50 cents a piece. So that's chump change. Somebody could just send you a, uh, a self-addressed stamp envelope, and you can stick a, an autograph book plate in there and send it back. It's just a way to, I don't know, a really cheap way to have a direct connection with somebody. So I'm definitely going to do that. I've already written to a, a company that makes these, and... I'm going to see if I can get them done for the next convention I go to. So that's my thoughts on swag. 
you definitely have to look, keep us posted on how well that works or how much it costs or whatnot because that is a good idea. I mean, I, I'm all for, like, for instance, I do giveaways. I do, you know, I send books out to you know, people that are giving reviews or whatnot. And I like the idea of having the bookmark and putting it in there just because they get something there. Or maybe every once in a while, like when I do like a, like a Goodreads giveaway, I'll slip in maybe like a refrigerator magnet that has like the, maybe the picture of the next book. It's like, okay, you want a copy of book one. This is what book two looks like. I hope you buy it. <laughs> put that in there so so yeah I, I've done stuff like that but yeah I, I haven't really like I said I don't think there's any bribe exists on the face of this planet yet that I can actually run by my wife and go hmm uh, an author friend of mine has a 3D print it's really cool what what do you say dear <laughs> and there she's gonna go <laughs> what have you been smoking so but that's something somewhere down the line because I, I, I see the possibilities of it where you could like if you design yourself up like okay I have this like a new a weapon or some sort. If you could somehow get that from the book to the you know, this imaging program, so you can actually print the thing up, I think that'd be really cool. It's just you'd have to brush up your artistry skills, and mine's not there to begin with. So, but it's it's something to think about down the line. The three D printers have untold possibilities. Yeah, I've actually had uh, some of my cover art people do bookmarks and for me, bookmarks and like I don't know little postcard kind of things for me just as uh, part of like here we did the cover here we can do this too for you and I think it's cool I just have not been going to conventions and things so I don't have a real reason to get some of these printed up but uh, it is in the back of my mind as something to do uh, especially you know some of the covers where you like really like the artwork I think that that can make sense to make bookmarks or postcards whatever out of that and I, I don't know what else you could give away coasters magnets <laughs> I don't think it costs very much. It is one of those things, like you were saying. There you go. A what coaster? is that? A coaster? <laughs> that's, a coast, that's a coaster of a gour, a ten set, ten-legged armored insect. I thought was pretty cool. Just the one that I have there, so I, so I put my coke on. Whatever I'm <laughs> back here writing. There you go. So it's it's something to do. I think it's great if you're doing the physical appearances to to have some stuff you can give away. Definitely. Buttons are popular too, I should say. If you ever go to a convention, you'll end up with a bag full of buttons. Just little the things you pin on your shirt. So I guess buttons are another good giveaway. <laughs> oh, I think what, they were good, good in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> what is a good giveaway, I just wish they dropped the price down, is, uh, uh, what is it, Cafe Press. Actually started up, into oh, there's a blank deck of cards. You can just supply the image. So I actually did it where I have like one of my book covers on there. It turned out really nice. It's just... Man alive, they cost like 10 bucks a deck. I was like, that's not real cost effective. But if you're ever holding some sort of contest on your blog, that could be like a grand prize or something. Here, you know, custom one of a kind for right now, one of a kind, you know, deck of cards, you know, with, you know, that's you know, themed to the books there. So, I mean, it's something. I have some cool steampunk cards that uh, I actually paid $5 for. I was supporting somebody's Kickstarter, but it would be kind of cool to get a deck of cards with your book covers on the back. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, last question. It looks like Jeff is asking something about Coke cans. Yeah, yeah. Well, because this happened to me, I'm curious if it happened to you and what your guys' take on this. What would the proper protocol be if a complete stranger approaches you in public and says they recognize you, whether from the picture from the back of your book, if you've got one there, or somehow know you're an author and says they're a fan? Do you A, turn as red as a Coke can, or B, humbly say thanks, or C, even hang around and chat about the books? Sorry to say my choice was uh, choice A. I I started stammering so bad, I, I know I turned red. I was like, because it was a waitress at a restaurant. She says, oh, you write books. You're the person that wrote this book. And she went back, got the book, plopped it down in front of me. The waitress. I'm like, uh... Uh, my wife loved it. She was laughing so darn hard. I think she had to go to the bathroom afterwards. But, you know, she's like, and then the waitress, when she goes, oh, this is great. She had me sign it. She turns around to the rest of the tables. Look, he wrote this. Yeah, that, that worked out well, too. So, turned me into a stuttering mess. So I'm just wondering if that happened to you guys. Uh, I have not been sort of flagged down just on, on appearance. I, I have a feeling if somebody were to stop me in the street or at a restaurant or anything and ask me if I'm the author of such and such a book, my first reaction would be confusion, and my second <laughs> one would be distrust. I'd be like, who put you up to this? And if it turned out to be a legitimate person who saw my face somewhere and decided, 
and decided that, you know, oh, I want to go over and talk to him, I would, there would definitely be a conversation afterward, if only to find out how they knew who I was. So I would definitely stick around and have the conversation, but not before interrogating them on whether or not there was somebody lurking in the corner who said, go over and say this to him. As it is right now, the only time anyone ever says, oh, you're an author, is when a friend of mine, he like, I'll be at a party with people I've never met before, and my friend will walk over and say, hey, you see that guy? He's a big famous author, and then walk away. So that's how it happens to me. And then I get a red face, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's true. I sort of act like it's like, oh, they've revealed my secret. <laughs> So, so your first question to the person that asks you, you know, if, or says, "Hey, I recognize you," would be, "Where's the camera?" Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, no, you don't recognize me. Who do you think I am? Yeah, I, I've even had a couple of computer clients, you know, actually stop me as I'm working on their computer, and they, I had a lady come up, show me her Kindle with the picture of the of the book cover on there. And my face is nowhere on the book cover because it's on the back side. They don't show the back side of covers on the Kindle. And so, like, this is you, isn't it? And I'm, like, typing away, and I glance down at the book, and I was like, uh, yeah. How? And she's like, oh, that's just great. I'm a really – and so she's, like, telling her husband all about it. I'm like, oh, this is just – I don't know how to deal with this. I'm just trying to fix the computer as quickly as I can now. So, And it's happened a couple times to me there. Not that – I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but unexpected. <laughs> Okay, well, I've never had that happen, and I don't put my picture in my books, and, and for a long time, I didn't have a picture on Amazon, and even now, it's, you know, I've talked about this before, I'm this little itty-bitty stick figure in the middle of the picture, and then there's Sedona red cliffs behind me, so nobody's looking at me, although now that we're doing this podcast, and we have like seven, eight people watching every week, odds are getting better that we might be recognized someday. Probably only at a convention or Comic Con or something like that, but it could happen. Um, I don't think I would be embarrassed. I think I'd think it was cool if they'd actually read the book. Uh, where I would get embarrassed is in Joe's situation where I just had to random people I have to explain, yeah, I'm an author, because uh, I don't ever talk about it. So, <laughs> it's my secret. I'm you making mean, good money, but <laughs> yeah. People think I'm doing dr you know, selling drugs, or that's how I get my money, you know, to to pull out the wad of cash. To you know, I don't have any wads of cash or any uh, flashy stuff. My car has 160,000 miles on it, so <laughs> nobody's gonna mistake me for a drug dealer. My biggest problem is when I tell family, friends, clients, like, yeah, I'm also an author. Oh, you write about computers? Just because I'm a, I'm a computer tech doesn't mean I write about computers, there. So no, I'm a fantasy author. Oh, really? So I've gotten into a habit of carrying around my binder. I've got actually pictures of the covers of those, some of the covers of the books. So, look, see, this is me. <laughs> so, but yeah, it actually it works out well. Most of the clients are like, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. And so it's real cheap. I'm like, I don't like you saying the word cheap. It's just, it's reasonable. It's not cheap. But it's good value. Yeah, so exactly. Most of the people I say, they're like, oh, yeah, what do you write? I'm like, fantasy. They're like, oh, Fantasy, that's nice. <laughs> like, no way would I ever read that genre. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, it's true. The most recent example I had with the whole author question was, uh, it's been snowing a lot here on the East Coast, and uh, my next-door neighbor is an elderly woman, so I was cleaning, out, uh, cleaning off my brother's car, and she started cleaning off her car, so I went over to help her out. And she was, you know, thank you very much. And so, how are you going to get to work today? And I was like, well, I'm just going to go back inside the house because I, I, I work at home. And I sort of, she had to like tease out of me the fact that I was an author. Like, well, author. oh, really? And she was fascinated. And, uh, but it was just like, I don't know. Yeah, I do sort of feel sheepish, particularly as a sci fi fantasy author, where it's just like, oh, okay, never mind. So, what you're telling, you said you're an artist, but really, you just, you're, it's coloring books. I understand. <laughs> Yep, they want you to be the next John Grisham or write some cozy mysteries or something that they actually read. Yep. Well, I guess I we've been blathering. <laughs> yeah, blathering for an hour or more here, so we're good. Right. <laughs> we don't have to. We don't have to plug anybody's stuff now. Any anybody have anything they want to plug? No. Uh, I got no. a book that's coming out eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. March. Yeah, mine will be out here eventually, but not yet either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll plug stuff in March. But uh, so, yeah, in the meantime, thanks for listening, everybody. We kept it super professional tonight, as always. <laughs> you can uh, come comment if you have anything to share on marketingsff.com 
or look up the Science Fiction and Fantasy Marketing Podcast on YouTube or iTunes and uh, subscribe, leave a review, leave a comment, whatever you want. We're, we're excited. We want to know our seven listeners are enjoying the show. Sure. Sorry, right. I've got to love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a good night. See you later. <laughs>